What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Siri was giving a bit of an intro, intro right there. But with that being said, we do have some stuff we need to talk about. The Central American gyre that is continuing to organize and develop off the coast of uh, Central America is showing signs of organization and development even further. And it does look like that this is anticipated to be the next tropical system, at least according to the National Hurricane Center. Here's the situation. We now have a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. When we reported on this yesterday, it was at 50%. Two days ago, it was at 30%. Now we're up to 70 Here's the situation. A broad area of low pressure is expected to form in the southwestern Caribbean in the next few days. Environmental conditions appear favorable for additional development of the system thereafter. A, quote, tropical depression is likely to form late this week while the system be uh, begins moving northeastward across the western and central portions of the Caribbean Sea. Interests in Haiti, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic should monitor the progress of the system. And I'd argue uh, interests in Cuba should also monitor this uh, as well because there's been some more models that have shown some more uh, potential Cuba impacts at this current point in time. Regardless of development, this system has the potential to produce heavy rains over portions of the Caribbean coast of Central America and the Greater Antilles towards the latter portions of this week. Formation chances remain 0% in the next 48 hours. This is more of a long-term threat right here. And the formation chances in the next seven days have once again increased to 70% because previously we were at 60%. If we go ahead and show you the earlier forecast from today, we can t go ahead and give you a better understanding of that. Gradual development is possible thereafter. And now if you go ahead and take a look at this the language now, a tropical depression is likely to form late this week. So, yeah, the NHC, since Thursday of last week, has been looking at this and tagging this as an area of interest. That's how confident they are that something's going to happen. They literally tagged this so early that it's quite baffling, in my opinion, that they actually did that, primarily because of the fact that they were about six to seven days out, and they were already saying, hey, this looks like a potential threat right here. We're going to tag this. And now the chances continue to increase and increase and increase, like I kind of anticipated they would. I was talking with Weather Center Nazario, and he was like, yeah, Patrick, I wouldn't be so sure that the chances are going to increase over the weekend. Uh, just It's just such a long-term threat and all that. And no uh, disrespect to him or anything like that. It was just his analysis, and I appreciated uh, that uh, look from him. And I was just basically tell him, telling him it's going to really depend on what happens because with the modeling and all that stuff. And now we have a 70% chance of formation in the next seven days. The chances doubled over the weekend. So there's that to, uh, there's that to uh, kind of contend with. So, yeah, all I'm going to say is this before we get to the models. It's looking increasingly likely that we do see some potentially big impacts for much of the Greater Antilles because even if this thing doesn't develop, it's still going to produce very heavy rainfalls. It's still going to produce some pretty gusty winds. And in maybe an extreme case, it's still going to produce a bit of storm surge. And my concern, especially for Haiti as well, because now that's in the potential red area of interest right there, is because it's A, it's so mountainous, B, the infrastructure is absolute shit, uh, C, just they have no government at this current point in time. So it's, yeah, it's really churning my stomach the wrong way. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the European model at this current point in time. If we're going to go ahead and show you that, we're going to go ahead and show you the signs of organization and development right there. And basically, starting about three days out, we start to see that low pressure system really starting to get its act together and then start to organize and develop further into a pretty large yet messy tropical storm as it does make some impacts towards Jamaica before approaching Haiti as a strong tropical storm, maybe around 60 miles per hour according to what the European is forecasting, but bringing extremely heavy rainfall to Haiti, to the Dominican Republic, especially to the mountainous areas, which is going to be resultant in a lot of landslides. So if you're watching this from Haiti, and you're watching this from the western half of the Dominican Republic, you absolutely need to pay attention to this because you guys are in a very serious trouble if this thing, even if it uh, doesn't develop, it's still going to be producing heavy rainfall. So, yeah, the more mountainous areas is the areas I'm particularly concerned about with this development right here from the European model. 
And if we can go ahead and show you some other factors as well, such as the shear forecast and the moisture component to all this, here's the shear forecast right here. The shear forecast in the next 48 hours is anticipated to pretty much uh, remain the same across much of the Caribbean. However, you do start to see a d gradual decrease in the wind shear across much of the Caribbean basin as time continues to go on. And especially as this approaches Haiti, we do start to see that decrease of shear in front of it. There may be a bit of shear towards the behind of it. However, the ba the thing I really am looking at right now is just basically th uh, that this shear is far enough out, in my opinion, to really help enhance the outflow, at least to some extent, going into this. And if it does end up doing what I think it's going to end up doing, well, that may cause some even bigger problems because what the shear tends to do if it's far enough is it enhances the outflow. It does just that. What does enhancing outflow does? Well, it helps increase the circulation. It helps increase the ventilation. And it gives the storm a much greater chance of quick organization and quick development. We saw that happen with Hurricane Lee. We saw that happen with Hurricane Otis just a couple of weeks ago. So I would not be surprised if something similar happens to this again. So definitely something to keep an eye on as time continues to progress. If we go ahead and show you the moisture moisture component there is quite a bit of moist air especially right now if we go ahead and show you this whole area over here so this is all a big situation that is continuing to unfold as time continues to progress but the moisture forecast is expecting more moist air to kind of be in the western half of the Caribbean Sea starting about f uh, two days out, which is going to be another factor that does help enhance that fl uh, that outflow. It uh, does help enhance that tropical potential right there. And then we start do see some dry air intrusion from the Gulf of Mexico starting about three to four days out. However, in my opinion, it's not going to be enough to really negate uh, this tropical development right here, primarily because A, there's going to be more than enough moisture to counteract that dry air, and B, uh, and B there's low enough wind to pretty much get this thing going before the dry air even tries to intrude at this current point in time. But there is still that risk right there, so we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. In fact, matter of fact, if we go ahead and show you the water vapor uh, map right here, there is uh, you can kind of see what's going on because there's a lot of dry air, especially across parts of the, the Greater Antilles and this part of the Eastern Caribbean Sea right there. But there is quite a bit of moist air going on from pretty much from pretty much Honduras south at this current point in time, which is what's really going to be enhancing it. And based off the dry air we're, see we're seeing right now, in my opinion, it's not going to be t uh, doing that much. And we'll continue to pay attention to the real-time conditions as the data continues to come in. But as of right now, I'm not particularly concerned with the moist air because it's going to be more than enough for tropical development right there. So that's what we have going on with the European model. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS uh, right here to kind of give you a better understanding of what of all the other models are kind of forecasting at this current point in time. Here's the GFS showing signs of organization and development about 60 hours out actually and then eventually becomes a messy category one hurricane as first makes landfall in eastern Jamaica and then it makes and then it just passes between Cuba and Haiti as a category one hurricane probably winds around 80 to 85 miles per hour. I am estimating based off the minimum central pressure at this current point in time. And the rainfall with this associated is absolutely mind-boggling, especially for parts of Cuba and Western Haiti right there, because a lot of these Greater Antilles, it's not just Haiti I'm worried about, because a lot of the Greater Antilles are very mountainous, particularly Cuba and Haiti, or Hispaniola, rather, but... Yeah, basically what I'm seeing is the rain rates uh, go uh, going on for especially parts of Cuba right there are rather disturbing to take a look at, to say at the very least, primarily because of that massive flood threat that really takes effect going into this. So that's the situation we have going on with the GFS. The GFS is a bit aggressive, yes, but it's definitely a scenario where I can see it actually being uh, played out. It's actually a rather realistic scenario, in my opinion, primarily because the global sea temperatures, the uh, ocean heat content, and that wind shear and dry air we were talking about. And we'll get to those in just a second, but first I want to kind of go through the model runs to give you a better understanding of what I'm thinking about. That's the GFS. Next model run we're showing you is the CMC model. The CMC has been a pretty interesting model, to say at the very least. If we go ahead and show you the 0Z, continues to show signs of organization and some development. 
uh, potentially getting up to tropical storm strength as it makes landfall in Haiti and then moves through the Dominican Republic and just basically all around caused a very massive flood threat and some gusty winds that could potentially exacerbate the situation even more, especially for Hispaniola and those mountainous areas over there. If we go ahead and show you the 12C model, sh showing a similar situation going on as before, except we're showing a bit of a stronger scenario, and this thing actually making landfall as a strong tropical storm over Cuba with a pressure of 999 millibars, but that doesn't mean that Jamaica and Haiti aren't going to see impacts. It looks like to me that Jamaica is going to be seeing impacts no matter what. How many impacts, I don't know just yet, because models can be one thing, but real-time conditions are a whole other ballpark, and the real-time conditions are really kind of anticipating something big that has the possibility to happen. So that's what we have going on with the CMC at this current point in time. Next thing we're showing you is the NavGem. NavGem model's been a pretty interesting model to say at the very least. Okay, it's there we go. It's opened up. NavGem has really been one of those models that have been pretty consistent showing signs of organization and development. Although the NavGem isn't exactly really showing a particularly strong scenario at the 0Z model at this current point in time. The 12Z though, if we go ahead and show you that, is a bit different, I would say, at the very least. It is showing a little bit of something going on, but it's not registered stirring as a low pressure system but either way Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, and the Dominican Republics are still going to get impacts according to what we're seeing from the NavGem model. Last model we're showing you before the conditions is the ICON, and the ICON model has been one of those models that, uh, that is kind of like the CMC. It's pretty consistent when it comes to showing signs of development, and the ICON is actually showing signs of organization and development, and similar to the GFS, it's actually going a, a bit more liberal and more strong than what the other models were forecast. We're get down to 998 millibars, which... If that equates correctly, could equate to about a 65 to 70 mile per hour tropical storm based on pressure alone while making landfall over Haiti and then Cuba and just absolutely causing a lot of flooding to go on all over the place. So that's what I'm particularly concerned about when it comes to all these model runs right there, because no matter what happens, it, someone is going to get hit and some people are going to get impacted by this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and briefly show you the conditions before we wrap this video up. Global sea temperatures still exceeding 30 degrees Celsius for November across much of the Caribbean where this thing is going to be organizing and developing. Not really that much of a surprise right there because we've had a record-breaking uh, season where we've had record-breaking sea surface temperatures all over the place. So it's particularly not that surprising, but what is very surprising is the insane ocean heat content. Where the gyre is right now, it's in an area of about 100 to 125 OHC, but as it approaches Jamaica and then enters Cuba and Haiti in that area, it's going to start cracking 150 OHC. So that's my particular concern right there, because just 100 OHC is enough for, de uh, for development at a very rapid pace. Anything stronger than that, yeah, that's not going to be very good so this is all stuff we need to continue to uh, keep an eye on and we'll keep you updated here on the pat's path predictor channel well with that being said we're closing the video out right here i really hope you enjoyed it leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather and with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe